Well, I'm excited today. Um, as you can see, I'm at home in my shop. And uh, the reason why I'm excited about being home in my shop is because I'm going to start work on this. Um, this is that camp trailer that, uh, well, it's not a camp trailer yet. It's going to be a camp trailer. <laughs> and that's why I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to start working on it, seeing if I can't get some stuff welded up for it and a rack put on so that it's ready to uh, begin becoming a camp trailer. So um, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to work on putting the rack on it that will hold um, the rooftop tent. The reason why I'm going to start with that versus anything else is because I want to prove the concept that it can be a camp trailer. I'm curious about the weight, if it's going to be too top heavy, if I'm going to need to do something different with suspension, um, any of that stuff. So the quickest way to get to that is to get a rack put on it and start doing some load tests and stuff and see if I can make it work for, um, for the ultimate uh, opportunity to be a camp trailer. So yeah, that's the plan for today. See if I can't make that happen. I've got it sitting outside all leveled up. I was going to do it here in the shop, but I've got kind of a limited space to work with in here. And so I thought I'm going to want that flat floor to be able to lay out the tubing, do the welding, um, just have that space to work as, as minimal welding will be done on the camper, at least to start with. Um, if anything, I can kind of get that tacked up and then bring it in and finish the welding on it. So right now I've got it on some jack stands. I've got it all leveled up or pretty close. It's not exact, um, but pretty close for where it's sitting. So I can get all my measurements, start cutting, welding inside, tacking on outside, and uh, see if we can't make it happen. My goal is I would like to take this camping. It's about a week and a half. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of time, and so that's my goal, is I'd really like to have at least it roughed in and set up to go camping. Ultimately, I'm going to do like a Raptor coating on it. Um, I've got some bench work and um, a drawer system. I've got a water tank sitting right up there on the shelf. I don't know if you could see that. Um, I want to put that water tank system in it. I've got a lot of cool ideas and stuff that I'd like to make happen, but initially I need to prove that it's gonna work. So we're gonna start with the rack and the tent and take it from there. Okay, that's the pipe I'm going to be using. It's a, uh, I don't know, what is that? Inch square? Inch square tubing. It's got a lot of surface rust. So every time I make a cut and weld, I'm going to have to do some grinding and clean it up a little bit. Um, and then ultimately, I'll have to go back over it, get a wire brush or something, um, or maybe one of those cup. With a cup wire brush cup thing that goes into a drill Zzz, zip it all down just kind of clean it up a little bit before I do that final um, bed coating on it but this is what I'm going to use um, the reason why I'm using it is because there's a bunch of it <laughs> uh, my father-in-law I don't know where he got it from but there's a whole stack underneath the bench over there that's just sitting there rusting out going bad and uh, so while it might not be someone's first choice, it's what I'm going to use because it's free. And it's sitting under there and it's just rotting and going bad, um, not being used. So that's the plan. I'm going to go get some measurements and see what I could figure out on this. Well, I was really hoping that these were, maybe I should even say I was really thinking that these were longer than they are. Um, what I was really hoping I could do was come off the bottom and then angle over a little bit. Same thing on the other side, off and angle over, and then just have that piece in the middle to kind of splice in. Um, mainly thinking that having the solid upright is going to be more important than having 
the two ends spliced together because there's not going to be a lot of weight on that. All the weight's going to be supported by the upright. And I'm just not a welder. So I know how to weld. Um, and I feel like I'm, I know the concept and, and do it pretty decently in order to get a good solid build. But I'd rather trust the solid pipe than my welds. But these are just short enough that I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm going to have to, I think, go up and then have the top piece go across and angle down and then splice them together there, which I think will be okay because I'm going to do a couple of cross members on the front and back to act as a ladder, but also just to support them together. Um, and I think I could put one of those right where that splice is so that I'm welding that in and that kind of reinforces everything as well too. So I think it'll be okay. Just having to change my thinking a little bit. So um, basically what I'm going to do is take these uprights and take three inches and do a 90 degree on that so that the base has a longer piece to weld to give it more support. Um, so I think I'm going to go do those first and then I'll do more measuring and see what I can do about the top piece. Gotta make sure those are a good 90 degree angle. I mean, I'll level everything as I tack it as good as I can, but that'll just make my life easier if that could just sit flat and I know it's a right, uh, a good 90 degree angle and take it from there. So now I'm gonna do some measurements, see if I can work on that top piece and uh, see if we can get it uh, cut down. And then once I've got all that cut, I'll do all my grinding to prepare for welding and the reason why I do it that way is because I've only got one grinder <laughs> so cut off wheel and then I switch the wheel to the grinding wheel clean everything up and then do my welding so 52 minus 67 no 67 minus 52 is going to be 9 is that right 67, no, 67, <laughs> 67, well, that's going to be more than 9, 67 minus 52, 15, see, it's 15, I'm, I'm just feeling the pressure of being on TV, that's why I couldn't do that math in my head, <clears throat> 67 minus 52 is 15. And half of 15 is going to be what? Right, seven and a half. So I need to take seven and a half off of each side and angle that over. So I just got looking at this. I thought I'd bring my upright out and just make sure I had enough for that two inches and got thinking what if I just did that lifted that up so that it clears the roof and did that that's a lot bigger surface there to weld than to try and butt them up and weld the tops together um, that'd be a much stronger weld I think I don't I don't see a reason why not to do that it'll still clear the rain gutter because I can move those uprights out where I need to I'm not trying to be lazy. I'm just thinking that's more of a of a bigger surface area um, to weld to and, and do it that way. So I think that's what I'm going to do is clean that up and, uh, and do it that way. I'm going to take that upright and angle it off so I can kind of cap it off so the water and stuff doesn't, you know, drain down in there. And that'll kind of give it a nice angle too versus those hard edges. Um, but I think that makes more sense personally. And then I'm going to have, you know, a good three, well, probably even closer to like four or five inches worth of, of length there that I can weld and get a good seam on. And I think it'll be a lot stronger that way too. So I think that's, 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep that and I guess I'll probably cut one more for the front and do it that way. Well, unfortunately I've had a tool failure. Um, I was just wandering over to see, I thought, I thought we had a second grinder, but I'm just not seeing it um, in my mess. <laughs> I know, I need to clean up. But uh, this guy here, as you can see, has seen some better days anyways. Um, it's just started making a racket. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. Assuming it's something with the clutch system. You hear how loud that is? Yeah, I, I think it's something in the clutch system, but it's... It'll spin, but as soon as you put any pressure on it, it just doesn't turn anymore. So that's kind of stopped me in my tracks, unfortunately. Um, I can't do much more without that because I've still got to cut pieces and grind and stuff before I can weld. So I guess you'll see me next time, probably with a brand new tool. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm back and I'm hoping to finish the frame on that today. Maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. Today. But that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, the camper itself won't be finished. And I need to come up with a name for that too. I'm not sure what that's going to be. But anyways, the camper itself won't be finished because there's a lot to do. I've got the frame. Um, I want to take the frame out and test it before I kind of move on to anything else just because I'm curious how the trailer handles pulling on off-road kind of bumpy situations and just a few different things um, just in case I need to fine-tune it um, anything like that. I want to raptor coat it. I think I found a window I can put in the side, some screens on the back, bench table system inside, drawers lots of ideas of stuff I want to do but first I need to prove that it can do what I want it to do before I get too elaborate because I don't want to spend a bunch of time money and effort um, if it's just not going to work so that's my plan today today finish the frame if I can get that done in good time if I can get that done in good time then I'm going to run into town use my forklift to swap the tent off the top of the Land Cruiser onto the trailer and uh, take it out for a test run. So, and by a test run, I mean an overnight camp trip. See if I can't uh, really put it through its paces and, and prove that this is going to work or prove that this is not going to work. <laughs> so uh, I got a new grinder um, right here and I went ahead and I got a um, battery op operated, uh, battery operated grinder this time instead of a corded one. It was kind of the cheapest one I could find on Amazon, so I hope that it's good enough to do what I need it to. Um, I think it probably will be. My biggest concern is it only came with one battery. It almost looked like on the ad it came with two batteries, um, which I'm gonna have to go back and look, but it only came with one battery and Unfortunately, even though it's pretty much the exact same battery as what I use for a fan that I stick in my vehicle during the summer um, to keep toner cool when she's in there for trainings and stuff like that, um, the slots aren't exactly the same. So I can't use the battery off of that. That was kind of my thinking was, oh, if I have more things that use the same battery, then the more the merrier, right? Because then I can have more batteries for the fan and more batteries for the grinder. They don't interchange, unfortunately. This this battery will work for both, but that battery won't work for both. 
<clears throat> anyways got a new grinder um, so I can kind of finish my cuts finish some cleaning up and actually start welding what I'm gonna do is finish my up rates and actually weld them in here where I've got the flat concrete floor um, to, to kind of weld them up so the hopefully I've got those hoops kind of secured ready to go and then I'll probably actually just pull the trailer in here um, because it'll be easier to level it and and closer to the power supply and stuff like that and out of the dirt and uh, and then I'll actually start welding on to um, the trailer itself and uh, get to that point so but there's a lot of ifs in there things have got to line up to to make that work but I'm, I'm really hopeful I think we should be able to do it um, if everything goes according to plan so with that said let's get to it so one thing I wanted to do on this top upright was I wanted to cap it off somehow so that rain moisture stuff like that can't fall in there very easy but I also thought it would just look a little nicer than those hard edges to angle that off a little bit I've marked my overlap I'm gonna want to come up from that a few inches where the cross member comes over to attach um, and I'm thinking about where that happens is probably about the same spot that I would kind of angle that off um, and do that. So right now we're looking at this is about six inches down. So if I came up three inches, it's going to be right there. And then basically just take that and draw a straight line down to this edge something like that and then like that so if I cut this out here that should give me a flap that I could just hammer down and weld shut so I'm going to flip it over and duplicate the same thing on this side and then we'll cut it off. Well, it's not perfect, but I think it'll I think it'll work once it's kind of all welded up and Sorry, was I yelling? <laughs> I think it'll work once it's all welded up and uh, kind of cleaned up and painted and ready to go. So I'm going to grab the other side and do it to the other side. And I think we're getting close then. Well, I hit a bit of a setback. <sighs> this battery that came with the uh, cheap grinder that I got will not take a charge. <clears throat> I was running it. I thought it died kind of quick. Plugged it into charge. Went out and dug in a trench that I'm um, working on to get power back to our well to hopefully solve that problem. Came back in, said it was charged. I thought, sweet. Started grinding. It died in the first like five seconds. Um, like I mentioned, this battery is different than the setup that I have for my other fan, which was a more expensive fan. Um, you can see the slots and so I couldn't just interchange and keep going it's pretty frustrated because now I can't grind again which means I can't finish my my uh, can't finish my camper but what I got looking at was I noticed that on here it's got a positive and a negative I don't know if you can see that and then all these slots here when I looked at my fan it only has two um what bars <laughs> i guess two bars um to receive and this grinder had a third one and so i thought hmm i wonder if that third one is really that critical i'm hoping it's not because i tore it out <laughs> here's the little the rod or the pin the fin that would slide in and that went right there and i just tore that out Plugged in my other battery, and guess what? Guess what? It's working, so 
Hopefully I'm not doing anything stupid by doing that. Um, but I'm going to run on this other battery and hope that I don't just completely destroy it also. Um, and, but the charging setup, that was, the, uh, that was what really clued me in. Was the chargers were exactly the same. Those two two bars like that so I figured well if all that's the same if these are the same to charge if that's the same width as the outside pins to run power then I'm not sure what the point is of that third pin is other than to make something that's proprietary so that you have to buy their battery and their stuff in order to run it so issue but meanwhile I think I'm up and running again which is great Okay, I made it through those last cuts. Um, I went ahead and did the front uprights also. And now I'm just gonna figure out how to mount those front uprights uh, to the trailer. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, so on the back here, I'm gonna be sitting on this platform here. Hi, Toner. She needs her ball thrown. Oh, gross. I'm gonna be sitting here, I think on the front, I'm actually going to notch it. This is like a C channel. Um, I don't know if I can get you to see that. Like that. So I think I'm going to have it come down and actually notch it to where it kind of fits into these, if that makes sense. And then I'll have two places that I can weld it here and here. This is going to be sturdier than that is. And I think not only will it allow for a good rigidity being upright but i think as far as any tilting or anything too having those notches and, and welding onto that will be quite a bit um, stronger so that's the way it's working in my mind at least maybe i'm completely wrong on that but i'm just giving this my best shot so um so i'm going to do some measuring on this see if i could figure out how to make that work and cut those notches then i think we'll be ready to start cleaning up ends um grinding off rust and stuff so that we're ready to start welding Okay, I think I've got everything cut other than the crossbars that'll kind of tie everything together and strengthen it, but I'm going to do that um, after I get everything kind of put into place because I don't know exactly what that measurement's going to be. So I'll cut those kind of last and deal with those last and weld them actually while everything's on the trailer, I think. So uh, now it's just time to start cleaning up and uh, start welding everything together. Okay, I think I got everything cleaned up, um, at least on these. So I think what I'm going to do is start tacking and, and kind of welding them all together. And then once that's all done, then I'll bring the trailer in, clean up what I need to on the trailer, start mounting on the trailer. Well, unfortunately, I think I made a mistake trying to be my own cameraman. And I don't think you got any of the welding. Sorry, wipe that lens off too. Um, I'll have to go back and look and see. I had it set up so that you could kind of see me working around. I was trying to do a time lapse of it, similar to what I did with the grinding. Hopefully that worked. <laughs> but it doesn't look like any of the welding did, and I wasn't keeping track. I was just moving forward. Um, but that might be a good thing because I'm not a welder, and and there's a good chance that I don't want you taking any welding tips from me <laughs> because I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways got these welded up so you can kind of see what I've done there this is going to be the rear which has the flat feet and then that there is the front um, so my grinders out of battery I'm cleaning up these welds seeing if I need to hit any other spots make sure everything um, what well, worked I guess make sure everything I'm hungry, so that's what I was getting at. I'm gonna let those charge. My son wants to go for a ride on the dirt bike, so we're gonna hop on the dirt bike, go for a quick ride, and then I'm gonna go inside, get some lunch, come back out, and probably at that point I'll bring the trailer in, grind it off so that we can start tacking onto that. I'm excited. That's, uh, that's the fun part. This has been all kind of the T 
tedious measuring, cutting, grinding, welding, hard work of it. Um, but now it's all going to start coming together. So that's cool. So I'm going to go hit that stuff and I'll be back after lunch. All right. Got the trailer pulled in. Um, I was messing with this jack. You'll remember a little while back it was missing the U-bolts and a wheel. Still missing U-bolts and a wheel. I couldn't get the right size bolts for it. But I got thinking about it. I'm like, um, I can weld. Why don't I just weld it on instead of bolting it on? And I don't have a wheel yet, but I'm going to try and... I, I'm pretty sure I've got one somewhere. I've got to find it, but if I can't, I'll get one for it. But it'll still work as a jack, even without the wheel. So I'm going to get that tacked on. And then I'll be able to get this trailer lifted up and leveled up. And then we could start putting the cage on it. So we'll get to it. Well, good news. I've got a preliminary fit here. That, that, the spacing I really like. I was worried they were going to be too close together, but I like this even more. I mean, that's like almost level. And I think it'll be pretty much perfectly level once I get everything in place. I've got some spacing I've got to figure out here, get those notches in and all that stuff. But, uh, in order to do that, I've got some grinding and prep work to do, but that's exciting. I'm really excited to see that uh, <laughs> it seems like it's kind of coming together. So once I get all this welded in, then like I said, I'll do a couple of rungs. I don't know if I'll do two or three rungs there, but it'll act as a ladder to kind of reach up, but then just kind of tie everything together too. So I'm excited. This is really cool. Well, so far everything's looking pretty good. I'm excited about this. I've got everything tacked in and kind of mostly welded on the base. Everything's looking pretty level. I measured between this side and that side and we're 42 inches here and like 42 and just under a quarter on that side. But I think it could be because everything's not staying level that way because there's nothing kind of tying it together. So I think once I tie it together, then we're going to be um, set to go. So. I think what I might do too, honestly, it feels pretty sturdy, but I might take these pieces that I cut out and use them kind of as gussets like that. Oops. But I honestly don't know that that's going to be too big of a deal. I think everything like this way is pretty sturdy. I think it's just going to be this way. I need to get stuff tied together. Um, but I've got plans for that to, like I said, I'll, I'll get those cross members put in. I think I'm just going to do two. I should be able to stand on this fender and then one kind of following this line and one following this line. I think will be plenty um, for either side to do that. What I am a little disappointed is, is this here didn't quite, I don't know if you could see that, that didn't quite get as much meat on it as I was hoping it would. So I think I might need to figure out maybe an angle piece like here um, or something to that effect that'll just kind of support it a little more and, and give it just a little more meat to weld onto and tie into. So I'm gonna have to figure that side of it out too. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna have time to go camping tonight. Um, with the grinder issues I had and just a couple other things, I don't think I'm going to quite make it tonight. I'm going to keep working on this. I don't even know what time it is, if I'm honest. Yeah, it's almost 4 o'clock. So I think I'm going to keep working on this tonight. I'll probably have <coughs> at least the structure of this 
pretty well finished up, I think, by the end of the night tonight, which means that I'll be fresh and ready to go um, for whatever opportunity I get next, which could be tomorrow night. Um, we'll just kind of have to see how things go. So, anyways, I'm going to keep working on this, see if I can't get it finished up, and uh, I'll show you when I get to that point. I'm still welding and cutting. Well, either my welder got too hot or it's decided it's had enough. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just got too hot. It looks like the little temperature light's on because it just suddenly stopped feeding and it wasn't even trying. So I'm going to hope that's the case and not that my welder is given up too. Um, but honestly, even if it does, I've, I've about got done what I needed to. So um, you kind of saw me put the cross members in. I've got this brace here that'll help kind of spread the load that weld right there is just terrible i've got some of these like that i'm pretty happy with and then others just didn't want to take i don't know i don't know just lack of experience i'm sure um we got these in got that base in i was just working on that there here's the other side those in that base there i mean this sucker's sturdy i wedged these in to try and even out the spacing between the the rack and the cap here i think just welding i, I probably should have um i probably should have alternated my welds a little more so that that it didn't want to like warp and pull as it cooled i think is what happened but i'm hoping by having those wedged in there while i welded these in got things hot and uh and maybe that'll kind of conform it and allow it to stay there so we'll see i guess um and then underneath here I don't know if you can see it. Put that little gusset in there. I don't know what else to call it. A little wedge um, just to support that too on there. So uh, I'm pretty excited. I think this is pretty much it. I've got to finish a couple welds over there and then welding should be done. Um, and it'll be time to go put the rooftop tent on. Swap that rack over, see how that nestles on there and sits one thing i am a little worried about is how high it's going to be um, it's going to be pretty tall up there and i don't know how the ladder on the roof roof top tent will react to that but also i've got that annex that comes off the side and i know for sure it's probably going to be too short um, so we'll see i'm, I'm a little concerned and concerned slash curious how all that's going to sit so that'll be phase two is getting that set on there and see how it goes so anyways i think that's it for today i'm kind of getting to that point where i'm just kind of tired and i'm worried i'm going to start cutting corners <laughs> so i think i'm going to call it and i'll play with this a little bit tomorrow and with any luck maybe i'll go camping tomorrow night. <laughs>